While there is limited knowledge about Leif's childhood and early years, it is known that his family had a knack for making life intriguing. Leif's ancestry is linked to Iren, a town in Norway, where his grandfather, Thorvald, son of Asvald Olfsson, got into numerous troubles after killing someone. This led Thorvald to flee with his family to Iceland, where the Norse were already present since the late 9th century. In this new land, Thorvald would pass away, leaving his son Eric to build his life. Eric, who would be known as Eric Thorvaldson, but more popularly known as Eric the Red, married Thordhild, a local girl and daughter of Joran Atlason. Eric and Thordhild established a farm in Erkster, located near Vanshorn in Breidafjord, in western Iceland, which likely was the place where Leif was born. Leif had two brothers, Thorstein and Thorvald, and a half-sister named Freydis, who was Eric's illegitimate daughter. However, a peaceful life was not in Leif's family's plans. His father, Eric, followed in his grandfather Thorvald's footsteps by being exiled for murder around 982. This time, there was no known Norse settlement to the west where the family could easily move. Rumors of lands sighted to the west of Iceland led Eric the Red to sail there, supposedly becoming the first Viking to set foot on the land that would be called Greenland, which in Norse means green land, a name likely coined to attract more people to settle there. He established the eastern settlement at the southern tip of Greenland around 985, choosing the best piece of land for himself and his family, and founded a farm called Bratelid in the so-called Riksford. Young Leif grew up in a pioneering lifestyle, while around him, Greenland was explored and colonized. The people surrounding him in this early colonization of Greenland were mostly lords and wealthy farmers, who owned their ships and probably numbered around 500 individuals. They established cattle farms with the domesticated animals they brought on their ships in the inner fjords, where the land was relatively fertile. Leif's exploits before his famous American expedition are recounted in a single source, the Saga of Eric the Red, whose accuracy is difficult to verify. The saga tells how Leif, a promising young man, wanted to sail from Greenland to Norway one summer, but was diverted off course to the Hebrides, where less than ideal sailing conditions kept him stranded there throughout the summer. There, he made use of a previously established Norse foothold on the islands. Fortunately for Leif, his vacation was anything but dull. He met a high-ranking lady in the local society named Thorgunna, for whom he fell in love, to the point that she claimed to be pregnant when Leif was ready to set sail again. Although Thorgunna wished to leave with Leif, her family did not approve of such a journey, and according to the saga, Leif felt reluctant to abduct a woman of such high rank from a foreign country. She wasn't happy with this and informed Leif that she would send her son to him in Greenland as soon as he was old enough to travel. Thorgunna later gave birth to a son named Thorgils, who after reaching the appropriate age, traveled to Greenland and was recognized by Leif as his son, at least as the saga goes. Leif then continued his journey to his original destination, Norway, where he swore allegiance to Olaf Tryggvason, the King of Norway, 995 to 1000, a man who went down in history among others for playing a role in spreading Christianity among the Norse. The saga of Eric the Red clearly addresses this theme as well, and again, being the only source for this unknown attribution, it states that King Olaf asked Leif Erikson to become his envoy and convert Greenland to Christianity. Leif agreed to this. Historically, it is possible, or even likely, that the Norse Greenlanders were already Christians by the time of the initial settlement. Iceland officially adopted Christianity in the year 1000 with Greenland soon after, before which the religion had already begun to take root. Anyway, Olaf Tryggvason's role in its spread seems a bit exaggerated, though he has been credited by the sagas with converting the people of Shetland and Orkney, the archaeological record demonstrates that they had already adopted Christianity well before the end of the 10th century. Similarly, Leif's role in the Christianization of Greenland should also not be taken at face value. 
the people who followed Eric the Red from Breidafjord, Iceland, in 985 or 986 to settle in Greenland, left few clues about their pagan funeral customs. Surprisingly, the oldest graves in the church cemetery of Gild, where Thordhild, Leif's mother, is believed to be buried, are Christian and date back to the late 10th century. This indicates that Christianity was already the predominant religion among these people, although it is believed that Olaf Tryggvason sent Leif Erikson the lucky to convert them in the year 1000. The story narrated in the saga of Erik the Red suggests that Leif's father, Erik, refused to convert, while Leif's mother, Thordhild, did convert. After her conversion, Thordhild refused to sleep with Erik, which caused great distress for him. Leif Erikson's fame is closely linked to the discovery of Vinland, the mysterious land of the vine, which is believed to stretch from the Bell Al Strait in Newfoundland to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, possibly extending to Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick. The saga of the Greenlanders adds differing information, stating that it was Bjarni Herjolfsson who first sighted the land. Instead, Leif hears his story of land sighting in Greenland, launches an expedition, and first reaches a glacier-covered slab of land that he and his crew call Helioland, and then a flat and wooded land they call Markland. Eventually, they arrive at a lush land where they find a base they call Leafspear. It is while exploring the neighboring lands that Leif and his men discover the wood and grapes that inspire Vinland. Leif's butter and Stromfer became the major archaeological boost to Leif's Vinland story in 1961 when the remains of a Norse settlement were discovered at Lance Meduse, the northernmost tip of the northern peninsula of Newfoundland, now in Canada. Eight turf-walled houses, including what appear to be chieftains' halls, other large halls, smaller halls, and huts, all with large storage spaces and some with built workshops, were discovered and date back to 980 to 1020, fitting within the saga timelines. A pin with a ring, a Viking type from Dublin, was also found there, matching saga information about Viking explorers having family connections in Ireland, as Leif's mother had Irish ancestry. The hypothesis that a Viking settlement was established at Lance Meduse in North America has puzzled experts for years. This site, which could have accommodated between 70 and 90 people, would have been used by work teams conducting expeditions to other regions in search of valuable resources such as wood, grapes, and furs. According to some theories, these resources could have been stored at Lance Meadows until they could be transported back to Greenland. However, this endeavor was considered unfeasible due to the great distance that needed to be covered. The significance of Lance Meduse is indisputable, as this site appears to have been the main Viking base in North America. According to estimates, the Norse population in Greenland around the year 1000 would have been insufficient to sustain another large settlement in America. Therefore, it is likely that Lance Meduse corresponded to locations mentioned in the sagas such as Stromfer and Leafspear. Leif, son of Eric the Red, may have led at least one of the expeditions to Vinland, as the constructions found at Lance Meduse indicate the presence of an important chief. Leif, who was his father's deputy in Greenland, may have been responsible for executing the Vinland expeditions. Leif's adventures in Vinland, as depicted in the sagas, may have been inspired by historical reality. After the Vinland adventure, the life of Viking leader Leif became even more enigmatic and surprising. His father, Eric the Red, died shortly after 1000, and Leif took control of Greenland, returning there to attend to local matters. He transferred control of Vinland to his relatives and family members, who according to the sagas, were obligated to pay him a share of their wealth. It seems that Leif lived a comfortable life, receiving constant contributions from his lords. Leif's brother, Thorvald, led an expedition to Vinland that ended in tragedy. He was struck by arrows shot by natives and died far from home. Another brother, Thorstein, also went to Vinland to recover Thorvald's body. 
Leif granted permission to his sister-in-law Gudrid and her husband Karl Sefni to use his houses in Vinland. The same happened with his sister, Freydis, who caused trouble during her expedition and ended up killing her companions with her own hands. Furthermore, the sagas also suggest that Leif played an important role in spreading Christianity in Greenland. His mother was honored with a church named after her, the Church of Thorhild. However, there is no concrete evidence to confirm this fact. Leif was last mentioned alive in written records in 1019, and his son, Thorkel, became the chief of Greenland in 1025. It is presumed, therefore, that Leif died sometime between 1019 and 1025. Except for his brief romance in the Hebrides with Thorgunna, there is no information about other romantic relationships of Leif, so how his son Thorkel came into the world remains a mystery. In the 19th century, before the discovery of Lance Meduse finally brought the Vinland saga stories to life and transformed them into archaeological reality, Leif Erikson was the chosen hero for many Scandinavians immigrating to North America at that time. The archaeological confirmation of Norse presence in America in the 1960s made Christopher Columbus share the stage with the Norse Viking Leif Erikson, who arrived in America about 500 years before Columbus and also gained his own day in the United States, Leif Erikson Day on October 9th. What are your thoughts on Leif Erikson's adventures, with his ups and downs? Feel free to share your opinion in the comments, it will be much appreciated.